So if we move on to the second component of aging, which you felt was important, it's the decline in VO2 max. What are our strategies yeah. around offsetting that? Yeah. Um, number one is consistent training. You got to get out the door and train consistently. You can't be hit or miss. You can't go one week, ride five times, the next week, ride two times, and then take a week off. It's not going to happen. Your VO2 max is going to go down. No matter what you do with those rides, you're going to lose VO2 max rather rapidly, in fact. So that, that's the first step. It's got to be consistent. Number two, you got to get a lot of volume in. You need to put in the miles. Jump miles are okay at this stage. You need to get out there. If you want to ride your bike to work every day to get some more miles in, that's great. I highly recommend doing that. You can fit that in on top of your other riding. That's going to make you a better cyclist altogether. I don't care what they call it. It's riding a bike is what it is. And we need to get more volume in. So that's the number two thing to do. I was number reading a report from World Tour physiologist Alan Cousins, and he was talking about to maintain a VO2 max above 50 after the age of 50 requires 12 hours per week of zone two aerobic training. And that shocked a lot of people that the volume was that high. And he said that news gets worse as you get to the age of 60. And by the time you get to the age of 70, if you want to be holding a VO2 max of over 50, you effectively need to be training with the same consistency, diligence, and discipline as a professional athlete. My next birthday is 80. Um, <laughs> You're so screwed. I'm, you need to train like Superman. <laughs> what am I supposed to do? I'm not sure you make it quite that simple that you can put a number on it, but everybody needs to be training at a high volume. Um, you know, I would say, you know, what does a high volume mean? I don't know if I can do it like Alan did and put a number on it for an age group. Um, I've just always done whatever, what I've enjoyed doing. I'm, I'm, I'm riding now around something like about, I guess, 12 to 13 hours a week. And my VO2 max is, is, is hung in there very, very nicely. Uh, over the last few years doing that. Uh, and when I compare it with, when I go back and look at the research, it says on what a 80 year old VO2 max should be, average population. Uh, they've got me as some kind of Superman off the top because my number is <laughs> is huge by that standard. But by the normal standard we're talking about here, it isn't all that great. Uh, but that's just the way it is with getting older. You got to expect that to happen, but you've got to be consistent and you got to put in the volume. And I think it's a good point about you're saying around 12 hours seems to be your limit. There is a lot of feel and intuition in that. I ride, you know, slightly more than that. I ride around 15 hours, but I notice if I dip from, if I go from 15 hours to 17 hours, it goes from being fun to being quite laborious and it all of a sudden feels like work. So I know around that 15 hours is my sweet spot for, you know, a physical benefit, but also enjoyment and sustainability. Yeah. I understand. In, in the winter time, I, I increase my volume up to around 16 or 17, but I cross train. So I'm now doing more than just riding my bike. In fact, my bike volume actually comes down from what it is in summer, but the cross training goes up. And so I wind up with a volume, which is relatively high. And um, that, then I think that's a big benefit. That, that, that brings me into the spring and summer with a nice base of, of aerobic fitness that I can now transfer to the bike and now I can start doing higher intensity stuff, which is a third phase of become, keeping your VO2 max high is you need to be doing high intensity. You know, and I would recommend no more than twice a week. Two high intensity workouts twice a week is adequate for everybody. And so what would be an example of a high intensity workout that you would suggest in season for an athlete? Well, it goes, again, it's going to depend on the athlete, but the most common one is VO2 max intervals, aerobic capacity intervals. So something like, let's say five times three minutes at 90 to hundred percent of your VO2 max three minute recoveries between them doing that uh, once a week and then going to do a group, a group ride another time a week that would give you two hard workouts in a week and, and it's going to do a lot to maintain or even improve your VO2 max. I used to be coached by former world tour riders with Sky, Michael Barry. And I remember asking him how to pace these VO2 max efforts. And he said to me, go till you see Jesus. <laughs> it's always <laughs> stuck with me. That's how you pace a VO2 max effort. Go to this e Jesus. That's kind of the way it is. There's there's some suffering that goes into that. The way the way to find out what what you got to have is 
as I'm sure you're aware of, a power meter helps you a lot in doing a workout like that. Heart yeah. rate is not very good for, for something, you know, three minute interval, four minute interval, heart rate's not gonna do you any good at all. That's, that's a waste of time. You need a power meter on your bike. And if you have a power meter, then you got to find out what is my VO2 max power. So you have a, a reference point. And the way you do that is you do a, an all out five minute effort and see what your average power, not normalized power, but what your average power was for that five minutes. And that's your VO2 max power. Now, when you come back and do this workout, like five times three minutes for five times uh, four minutes or four times four minutes, something like that. Now you do all of those at 90 to 100 percent of that number you found on that five minute test. And I guarantee you over the course of a few weeks, that's going to give you a much higher VO2 max. This is a question I've always wanted to ask you, Joe, and I it slipped my mind last time we talked. I'll be doing efforts like this in, say, getting ready to start the season, January, February time. And the first set of these I do, the weather here in Ireland, it doesn't get super, super cold, but it could be down at two, three degrees Celsius. Is there a harm in doing those sort of full gas capacity VO2 max efforts in that cold temperature, we'd sort of joke and say, oh, the effort's got into my lungs because you'd have a terrible cough after the effort. You do. Yeah, I, I would suggest you don't need to do that. You probably don't need to do that type of workout at aerobic capacity intervals more than about six to eight weeks at the, at the most. Because what's going to happen is you're going to get a nice increase when you first start doing them. And that increase will be kind of like jagged, kind of like ratcheting up. And you'll keep getting your VO2 max will essentially be going higher. But once you get to about six or eight weeks for a good athlete, that's as high as it's going to go. From that point on, it's, you're now taking a risk of being injured from doing that a workout like that repeatedly beyond eight weeks. You need to do something different. Cut back. Work on work on your time trial uh, intensities. So something more around your threshold instead of your VO2 max. This was an extract from my conversation with Mr. Joe Frail. If you enjoyed this extract, you should please check out the full video, which is up here. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel.